is breaking news now on Fox News Channel. And right this moment, we're getting reports from the Aurora, Illinois Police Department of an active shooter situation inside uh, near Highland and Archer, which is in this town in a manufacturing area. Our station, Fox News Chicago, WFLD, is reporting that multiple people have been injured. No word yet on the shooter. And just that one tweet from authorities. Let's listen in local now, Fox 32, Fox News Chicago, with the latest as it's breaking. This is live. Police, we're hearing reports, as Sally just said, of several injuries as well. We have a, a, a person from across the street who claims to be an eyewitness calling into our newsroom, saying he hears it is a disgruntled employee uh, at this uh, at this company, uh, that being the Henry Pratt Company, which is again uh, just right next to. The uh, campus of Aurora University in Aurora. And as I said, we do have a reporter on the way. This is our chopper over the scene. You can start to see there's a little bit of movement there. Uh, some folks moving between uh, the first responders. Not seeing a lot of activity and movement, though, uh, from, those, uh, from those various vehicles. Right. You see the vehicles, not a lot of people moving there. Some in the upper portion of your screen there. We understand also, as well, Rafer had mentioned, this is affecting schools in that area. Holy Angels, the Catholic school that near there, it is on lockdown. Um, and again, also District 129 holding their students right now. So this is affecting a lot a lot of places out there, and you know right now a lot of parents, a lot of people very worried anytime we talk about an active shooter in this country, especially with those schools in Absolutely. the area. A lot of people are wondering what is going to be happening there, and we are again hearing those reports of people injured. So uh, we're going to continue to stay on this breaking news right here on Fox 32, uh, keeping you in the loop on this. Uh, I'm going to mention again. A lot of these are unconfirmed reports coming in right now, so we're waiting to get the information. Again, our crews are going to the scenes and um, Air Fox over the sea, where you see that there's obviously um, this is a major event happening with all those vehicles. And this just coming into us from the Daily Herald saying that, quote, multiple civilians and one Aurora police officer have been wounded, and the suspected shooter is still at large. That is key. They're saying the suspected shooter is still at large in an industrial area area near Archer and Highland, that according to preliminary reports from the scene and the Daily Herald. Multiple ambulances, as we can see, are there. We can certainly confirm that. They're being staged at a pizza restaurant near the scene near Holy Angel School and some area businesses on lockdown. The fact that the shooter is expected to be still at large, Sally said, this is near several schools. It's near a university. So obviously tensions are extremely high uh, at this location right now. And that is why, again, those schools holding students at this point. This started about two o'clock, so almost a half hour ago, this all started. So again, Holy Angel School on lockdown. They're holding the students in the District 129, telling Parents, they put out the word to parents that yes, there are reports of an active shooter happening at the Henry Pratt building. Uh, again, this is by a Luigi's Pizza as well. So all district students are in place for their safety because again, that shooter, they We're say. We're listening to local coverage on Fox News Channel across the nation and around the world from Fox News Chicago, our local owned and operated station there, Fox 32. I want to show you a map of where this is. Uh, Chicago, of course, is right on the lake. But as you'll be able to see from this map, Aurora is just to the west, southwest of it, uh, not too far from Chicago and actually inside the Chicago uh, television market. Uh, this active shooter situation reported a little bit less than a half hour ago at the Henry Pratt Company. If you go back to the live pictures, you can see it's sort of an industrial area there. There's a campus across the street for a local college. Uh, and the details that we have from police, not a whole lot except that Aurora police are responding to this company. Police say uh, command staff were at the site, and you can see that there was a large presence outside this location. The reports from WFLD, Fox News Chicago, that multiple people are injured in this. We don't know how they were injured, that no one has said that they are shooting victims, only that people were injured. You know that there's lots of different ways people can get injured in, in a very scary and chaotic situation, so we don't want to jump the gun there, but we know from Fox News Chicago that a number of people are, are, uh, are injured. From the school system, per directions from the county sheriff, the district has been advised to go into soft lockdown situations all across the school district there, teaching to continue, but nobody allowed to leave or enter the buildings until this lockdown is lifted. And the reason for that is the shooter in this, well, the, the reported shooter 
is said to still be at large. Uh, again, reports of an active shooter happening now with reports that the shooter is still at large or at least not contained in any way and listening to local, re local reporting now. Fox News Chicago breaking into 2.30 in the afternoon programming uh, in Chicagoland uh, with this breaking news developing now. Listen. And we're also hearing that the DuPage County Sheriff is also on the scene. Illinois State Police are on the scene. You can see uh, another police officer coming in. I'm seeing another, um, another report coming in that it was, in fact, uh, an active shooter. The active shooter was a disgruntled warehouse employee. Again, we have not confirmed that. That is still coming into our, our newsroom secondhand. Uh, it's going to obviously be very difficult to get information firsthand, as this is going to be a very closed, uh, understandably so scene. It's a dangerous scene. It's a crime scene. There's an active shooter on the loose uh, right now. So everything we're getting in, we're getting in very much piecemeal, relying on these pictures really to, York, to tell the story. Uh, the local fire department has sent out a request for quoting here as many ambulances as possible for this active shooter situation. And you can see if we go back to WFLD, there you go. Uh, you can see that a number of emergency vehicles are staged right around the location of the active shooter situation and others further in the background. You can see some fire department officials there. They're in the lower left of your screen, uh, sort of half jogging up the street there. So a, a chaos might be overstating it, but certainly. Uh, a very serious situation as authorities are looking for an active shooter while trying to treat some of those who are injured. Uh, we have multiple choppers up over the scene now and multiple reporters on the way. Continuing coverage now from Fox News Chicago. Active shooter is still out there at this point is what we're hearing. A very large police presence. People were reporting that they saw just fire trucks speeding by, heading to this area. So you know that at this time in Aurora, it's a very tense situation. Mm -hmm. A lot of people on edge right now waiting to hear more, and we are waiting to hear more. But there, those pictures really tell you just what a large uh, response that this is. Again, all those ambulances we've been talking about as they requested as many ambulances as we can get. Again, I said that people have been seeing those fire trucks speeding by and there they are right there next to that large white building um, not seeing too many police cars right, right in this area but um, you know we have been told that there is a heavy police presence there and as we pull out wide yes and you can see uh, it, it appears that there's a command center there um, in, in uh, back against that wall uh, this is, you know, this is a lockdown situation for schools, so you're going to see police try to essentially lock down this area, keep people from going both in and out of the area as the reports come in that the active shooter, uh, my apologies, that is not a command center there, but uh, as the active shooter that we are hearing is, is still on the loose, uh, it looks like you can see it's possible, it's hard for me to tell, SWAT teams possibly. Uh, walking into the area for a situation like this and an active shooter, you know, that would be protocol. You but, would bring in SWAT teams uh, mm -hmm. to try to lock the place down, uh, but they haven't been able to locate him, according to reports. So we don't know if he's still in the warehouse or if he's uh, fled the area at this point. Yeah, and we do have been reports that the SWAT team is there. Those people we saw were kind of walking across the parking lot, obviously not running at, the, at this point. I want to give you a, a little bit better idea of where we're talking about. Again, this is at 401 South Highland here. As I look at the map, it's, you know, not too far from the Fox River. The, there's an electrical supply company very nearby. Switching over to, to live pictures coming into us from our network news service station, WL, this is WLS now, uh, another of our stations there on scene. And as they push in here, you'll be able to see the line of emergency vehicles. Uh, all around this area. Uh, the latest we've gotten is that they just really, is, there's a great deal of uncertainty, it would appear, about where this shooter may be. The latest we've gotten is we have no additional reports of shooting uh, since, the, since, the, uh, since all of this began. We have no confirmation that anyone has been shot, though we do have from Fox News Chicago that a number of people have been injured. Uh, our, our network news service station, ABC7 in Chicago, is reporting that their people reached a woman inside the warehouse who was shaken up but said she was okay and she believes some of her coworkers were hurt, uh, but then she told ABC to, to call corporate. So that's from our network news service affiliate, ABC7 in Chicago. So we don't have any direct reports of anyone being shot, but we do have reports of an active shooter a number of people injured, 
and a lack of certainty about where the, the shooter himself, if there actually was one, is at this point. They're certainly treating this as a very serious situation. Uh, schools are on a, what they're calling a soft lockdown, nobody in or out. Uh, they've set up cordons around parts of this area. Again, this is Aurora, Colorado, for the, uh, excuse me, Aurora, Illinois, for those of you who may just be joining us, which is west of Chicago, uh, northern part of the state, and just west, southwest of, of Chicago itself. And we've been listening to local coverage from our station there, uh, Fox News Chicago. Let's, let's listen in again. Coordinating with the people at the plant. And their, their biggest challenge right now is to safely uh, evacuate the people from, from the grounds while also attempting to identify uh, the active shooter. So that's a very complex and detailed challenge for these first responders. So it, it kind of walk us through what some of their first goals would be at this point. What is their main focus, finding that shooter, I'm thinking? Their main focus right now is command and control, meaning they have to work together and they have to be able to identify that threat. They're going into an environment, there's employees there, there could be visitors there, there's a, there's a criminal element there. It's really trying to, it's a, it's a crime scene also. So human, you know, human capital is, is paramount here, but they have to be able to really you know, control this scene and at some point neutralize the threat. And as we can see now, we're showing our viewers there is the heavy police presence. Earlier we were showing you the first responders, the ambulance, paramedics. There's the police presence uh, that we've been talking about. So, um, it, uh, Mr. Verdon, this, so the SWAT Let team will be on the scene right now. Will SWAT uh, be heading inside to try to essentially lock down? Michael, before you answer that, I just want to give a quick update that we're getting right now. The Daily Herald is now reporting that four Aurora police officers are wounded as well as multiple civilians. So, again, Four Aurora police officers wounded, multiple civilians. That is the word right now from the Daily Herald is there on the scene. Um, Michael Verdon, when you hear those numbers that we know we have that going, um, going on, what's, what, what's your thought process? Well, the thought process, as far as the entry in, into the building, yes, it would be a tactical unit, you know, special, specially trained, uh, you know, highly adept at these types of uh, situations. There's also the emergency medical need. You talk about four wounded that we know about. There could be other, other casualties, too. So you're trying to balance the fact that you have emergency medical needs and you have an emergency management response. The, the professionals that are in that building uh, like I said, are highly trained, and the, their training will come into play here. If you know, it's not going to be usually like a police officer assigned to a beat, for example. It's going to be a, a police officer. They call it turtle gear. They're wearing Kevlar, bulletproof vests, protective helmets. They Shepard Smith in New York. Now, new information just coming into us from the from the from the ATF. Uh, we're now notified that Chicago, ATF Chicago is responding to this active shooter situation. Uh, the locals are now reporting that as well. And I want to give you more. Uh, you heard the local anchor there mention uh, the su suburban newspaper there for the suburbs of Chicago is the Daily Herald. Uh, and it is the one who's, who's on scene and reporting that four <clears throat> Aurora police officers and multiple civilians have been shot. We've, we've been saying injured because that was all the information we had. Now this is the first uh, hard report from, from the locals that, that people have actually been shot. And among those, four Aurora police officers and multiple civilians shot with, a, with a, the suspect at large. Again, that's from the Daily Herald, which bills itself Suburban Chicago's information source. And I'll give you the rest that they have. Uh, reading through now from the Daily Herald, four, Ariz uh, four Aurora, Illinois police officers Multiple civilians have been wounded, and the suspect, suspected shooter is still at large in this industrial area near Prairie and Highlands Avenue, according to preliminary reports from the scene. There were unconfirmed reports earlier, which I won't get into because they're unconfirmed, but I can tell you multiple victims are now being airlifted to Advocate Good Samaritan Hospital in Downers Grove, which is nearby. Again, this is the reporting of the Daily Herald. SWAT teams from thro throughout the suburbs are being called to the scene. Police are urging anyone in this area to shelter in place in nearby Holy Angels School and some businesses 
are on what we heard earlier as a soft lockdown. So what was a serious situation has become much more dire now with the reporting now from the, from the suburban newspaper that four Aurora police officers and multiple civilians have been shot and the suspect currently at large. Uh, Jonathan Hunt, is work, our chief correspondent, is working sources in the background here for some updates. Jonathan, what are you learning? Shep, I think uh, it's important to note here that this is clearly a very active scene still. Uh, obviously, uh, it, the school district is a major concern here. The West Aurora School District 129 has already posted a message to all parents saying that every single district student is being held in place now, a lockdown at all schools. And the major concern, of course, is that there is no indication whatsoever at this point uh, that the police know exactly where this shooter is. That we certainly have no reports of anybody taken into custody at this point. And I think as you look at these aerial pictures, Shep, Shep uh, around the Henry Pratt building in Aurora, uh, it's interesting to note, and I, I have not seen, I'm not sure if you have, but I have not seen uh, many officers moving with guns drawn. Now, That's Jonathan, I haven't either, but I do have to interrupt because a spokesperson for the city of Aurora on the line with Fox News Chicago. Listen. Confirm that it was there in the Henry Pratt building, that this, the active Henry, shooter was inside? It's in the Henry Pratt building. And at this point, so we have ATF on the scene. We have, uh, can you give us a list of some of the other uh, multi -squad. Yeah, a, a number of other first responders from the uh, greater western suburban area. We'll be publishing that list uh, shortly. Clayton, as we watch, we're watching uh, Air Fox over the scene and sure. that huge response. Yeah, and you, you've got to know that the people in your city right now are very nervous and very worried. What yeah. do you say to the people watching right now? That they understand uh, the seriousness of this matter. They know that we are in the best of hands with our police department and we're doing everything that we can to get the situation under control. Is this something that uh, your city has, uh, has never, as far as I can tell, has never had to deal with anything like this, Mr. Muhammad? It's a very tragic, very sad situation. Um, Most definitely. Yeah, I mean, this, is, uh, this has got to be taking an emotional toll on, on, on you and other city officials as well. Yeah, you know, but we're, we're here for the benefit and the safety of our entire community. But thank you all. We appreciate it. If you can please continue to monitor our social media, we'll be doing updates throughout the afternoon. Okay. Thanks so much. Clayton Mohammed from the city of Aurora, thanks for the time with that. Um, again, saying that there was, it came in about 2 o'clock, a report of an active shooter there at the Henry Pratt building uh, that's on Highland. And that whole area is shut down, and that's where we see this huge response that is growing by the minute. And the bottom line right now, that active shooter seems to still be on the loose right now. And again, we're not getting, we're getting unconfirmed reports, but the Daily Herald, Mr. Clayton uh, Mohammed would not confirm it, but Daily Herald reporting four police officers, Aurora police officers have been shot, several civilians have been shot, and suspected shooter is still at large. We have another legal. I'm sorry, a law enforcement expert on the phone, Eugene Roy, uh, former chief of detectives for Chicago PD. Mr. Roy, thank you for joining the us. The latest we're getting here in New York, uh, it, much of it is coming from the ATF, which has just arrived on scene, uh, and some live pictures coming in from our local stations. The shooting that has been reported uh, was just about 45 minutes ago now. Our understanding of things was that the shooting happened and then stopped. Authorities came. They've airlifted a number of victims to a, to a nearby trauma center. Uh, and from the WFLD feed, you can now see a line of emergency workers headed with what appears to be officials behind them uh, up the street and, and toward this scene. We're expecting that we may be able to get something official from authorities here in just the next few minutes. The reporting that we've been citing is from the Daily Herald newspaper, the suburban newspaper there in Chicago which is alone in its reporting. Fox News has not confirmed, but the Daily Herald is reporting four Aurora police officers have been shot and multiple civilians shot with the shooter at large. The details we don't have yet. For instance, was, a, was there a shooting underway to which authorities responded and then the shooter himself, uh, whether one or more, we don't yet know, got involved in a shootout with police? Those details have not yet come. But what we do, what we our reporting through the Daily Herald is that four officers are shot, multiple victims, and they are transporting a number of them by life flight helicopter to nearby trauma centers. We're expecting to have reporters on scene at, the, at that trauma center very shortly, and reporters are arriving here in Aurora, but you can imagine 
uh, in the afternoon, a quarter to three in the afternoon on a 17 degree day in the area. And uh, traffic is brisk with lots of roadblocks around this area with the soft lockdown underway even now. You can see those officials headed up toward this air, uh, warehouse area from the WFLD picture out of Aurora. And a, and a huge crowd has now gathered outside the building there. Let's listen in to Fox News Chicago again. I mean, this is, not sounds like, this is a very tense situation. This is a, a highly, um, you know, this is a dangerous situation. We're witnessing uh, first responders, officers, walking around the perimeter. Is that because what we're seeing on the outside is starkly different from what would be going on inside the building? I mean, from the, to the naked eye and to the layman, looking at some of what, the pictures that we're showing, it doesn't appear that there's a, a, a sense of, of emergency on the outside. Can you, can you talk a little bit about that? I can assure you that there is a sense of urgency. There is a sense of emergency. Uh, we may not be able to see it because uh, it's going on behind the walls of that building. Uh, but trust me, these people are professionals. They're out there. Uh, they're very much uh, on point, and they're ready to do whatever needs to be done to uh, mitigate this situation. As we're taking a look at live video right now, I, again, it's hard to tell through the trees and at the distance that uh, they're keeping us back, but it looks like a lot of officers are there right outside the plant. Um, I'm thinking some of those might be in the SWAT team vehicles. What's there? Do they want to get in? How do you get in there to stop this active shooter, but also maintain the safety of these officers who are there on the scene? I mentioned earlier in our conversation about having to conduct an intelligence assessment. You need to know where the incident is taking place. You need to know as much as you can about the person who, the offender who's perpetrating this. Uh, you need to know where the exits are. Shepard Smith in New York. Now, we have, a, we have a witness on the phone. Tanya Urban is with us. She works nearby and says she heard the shots fired. Tanya, are you okay? Yes, we are okay. We're in a lockdown. How far are you from here and from the scene, and what did you hear? Um, we're about maybe a mile, not even a mile away. We heard about three or four shots. And then you we heard saw three or four of, shots um, from a mile away? Yeah, it was really loud. Okay, go on. When was that? It was um, around an hour ago. Yeah. Um, so right about 2 o'clock? Right, give or take the time and stuff like that. But um, we had the kitchen open, the door. And we can hear it because it was on Prairie and Highland, uh -huh. and we are on Prairie and Lake Street. And, and do you have an idea about how many shots you heard? We, we heard three. And, and what is the situation now? If, I, we know that the school district is on what they're calling a soft lockdown. What's the, where do you work, and what's the situation there? Um, I work for Mommy and Aiden Academy. It's a daycare center, uh -huh. and one of my parents... Um, Mom works there where um, this is happening. So I guess the employee got fired and um, started doing all that stuff. Well, we, we've heard, we've, we got this same reporting from WFLD in Chicago, but Fox News cannot confirm exactly how this began. We, we know that that's uh, something that's been said around, but before we confirm that, of course, we'll have to wait to hear from authorities. We have, a, right. we have a map that's put together. Stay with me now if you can, Tanya. We have a map that's put together of this Henry Platt company, and there it is in the big wall. Uh, you can see it's an enormous place. That a lot of folks work there, huh, Tanya? Right. And what does the Henry Platt company do, do you know? No, I don't know. But I'm you said the mother details. of one of the children at your daycare works there. Right. And, and so, she just called me, you know, quickly and just told me, you know, to make sure everything was okay. And she was trying to tell me, but she, the phone, I lost the phone call because my phone's been ringing for the last hour. I'm sure that, I'm sure it has. Are you guys keeping the kids, keeping the kids there and not letting people in, in, in or out? Or what sort of a situation are you under? Um, we're having all the doors locked and we're not allowed to go outside or anything like that. So we got an open window. All the blinds are open. So just to make sure that everything is safe and everything. Tanya Urban on the line with us who works nearby and says she heard uh, three shots. Uh, stay safe, Tanya. Thanks so much. We're waiting for authorities to let us know if they've been able to get a suspect into, into custody. But so far, our understanding is that that hasn't happened. The Henry Pratt Company is a leading manufacturer of valves and accessories 
with more than 60 years' experience in servicing the power industry, uh, introduced in repair work in the Con, Con Edison in the city of Chicago, uh, and a, a, large man, a large employer there in the city of Aurora outside Chicago. Uh, the police presence continues to grow around there. I mentioned that the local fire department had asked for all available ambulances to come to the scene, which really isn't that unusual when you don't know how many victims there are. Uh, the local suburban newspaper, again, the Daily Herald, updating its coverage. And the latest they have uh, with reporters on scene is four uh, Aurora cops and multiple civilians shot. We know that a number of people have been taken to nearby trauma centers. And just looking for other updates from there. So far, not much. Fox News Chicago. Hi, everyone. My name's Mike. I'm the creator of Mox News. And uh, for the last 15 years, I have been telling you that uh, as long as I have the support of the community that I serve, Mox News will post videos forever. And that's the truth. As long as I have your support, no one could ever make me stop. Unfortunately, currently, less than one half of one tenth of one percent of Mox News viewers ever donate, tip, or contribute anything back. Again, let me make that really clear much less than one half of one tenth of one percent ever give anything back. And to those of you who have donated to Mox News, I want to thank you so much because it's because of your generosity that we have been able to bring attention to important videos that millions and millions of eyes would have never seen. And I think that that's a, a, an amazing thing that we've been able to make happen together. And I can't thank you enough for helping me make that happen. So it's not too late. If you'd like to see Mox News covering the 2020 presidential election, if you can't imagine the 2020 presidential election without Mox News, please, there's still time. You can make a difference. It's easy to make a contribution, donation, or tip. Uh, you can go to moxnews.com or in the text body of this video, there are clickable links to the Patron page or to um, the PayPal page and and again it should take less than two minutes to make a donation and your donation can make a big difference so I thank you all stay cool one of these days this war is going to end and it would be awesome if Mox News could be there to celebrate that day with you